go to the Badlands, there, there's, it's like walking into an outdoor art gallery of rock sculptures. And there's so many things that you, you, you just see and, and, and that you think about. The idea of a metaphor comes to, to mind very quickly for me. I mean, I work in the library. It's like the Badlands. It's like an archive where stories have been exiled. It's like a valley of secrets. There's so many stories there. I actually had an art show in Edmonton, Alberta. Uh, I did a previous series on the crooked trees of Altacane. And when I was, I was looking for a new series to paint. And when I was coming back from Edmonton, I decided I wanted to check out Dinosaur Provincial Park, which is located just north of Brooks, Alberta. And um, I got there and I was mesmerized by the landscape, completely mesmerized. I knew right away I wanted to paint the Badlands. However, when I got back to Moose Jaw, I discovered that there had never been a book published on the Badlands of the Northern Great Plains. When I found that out, I put my brushes down and picked up my camera and I went pretty hard. Uh, there are 10 Badland regions I, I, uh, I photographed. There's four in Saskatchewan, four in Alberta, one in North Dakota and one in Montana. As well, there's a, a, a chapter on the Cottonwood Trail, which is part of Dinosaur Provincial Park. I, th I think with painting, it's, it, there's a lot to do with light, and photography is a huge amount um, about light. And I, uh, I got into high dynamic range photography, or HDR, which is where you would take three or more images in, in your camera and then compose them together in Photoshop to get more definition, more, more of a dynamic range, really. It gives it that three-dimensional aspect, and having the photographs printed on aluminum metal really adds to that as well. The, when you get a good light on the, the, on the aluminum, the photograph really pops. With this particular photograph, it's not HDR, it's light painted. And so what I would do is that I'd have my camera on a tripod, my exposure would probably be eight seconds or so, and then I would be off to the side and I would have a flashlight or, a, or a kind of a spotlight really, and I would literally paint the scene with light. Moose Jaw was my day off and the light was awful, it was flat, there was really no point of going out and taking photographs, but I thought, you know what, I hadn't been to um, the Kildare Badlands enough, so I at least I'll go down there, I'd do some exploring, maybe you know, line up some good shots. I, I roamed around here and then I, I set up my um, camera right here, I composed this shot. And the sky was great, but there was no light. And I thought, wow, if, you know, all I just need is some light to come through. I was daydreaming, doing whatever. All of a sudden, the sunlight just came out and nailed uh, the middle of the uh, mid-ground here. And I just jumped up and I went, wow, if that light comes towards me closer and closer, I might have a great shot here. So I was literally just clicking the shutter, high dynamic ring shot. So, and, and remarkably, the light just kept coming towards me and towards me until I hit the peak and then it was done. This is the cover of the book called Scar Tissue, um, named after the book by Michael Ignatieff. I decided to name all of my photographs, or at least 90% of the photographs in the book, after books by Canadian authors or American authors. So the, the American Badland images are named after American authors and the Canadian Badland images are named after Canadian authors. This one's called The Stone Diaries, named after the book by Carol Shields. This photograph is called Life Before Man, named after the, the novel by Margaret Atwood. This photograph is called The Dispossessed. It's taken um, at the Avonlea Badlands, which are located uh, by the, near the town of Avonlea. For me to exhibit my work is probably the most fulfilling thing. Uh, probably even more fulfilling than selling a work. You see, the whole collection um, is very fulfilling. Um, gives people uh, a, a good idea of the Badlands too and, and what they convey and how powerful they are. And This is a, fa a photograph called um, The Stone Angel by Margaret Lawrence. Um, and this is in the Big Muddy. And as a photographer, um, well, to backpedal, this is um, Castle Butte. And Castle Butte's a very iconic image in Saskatchewan. As a photographer, you kind of go, well, here's something that's been photographed many times. It's up to me to do something a little bit different, try to get a little different shot. And so I hiked up into the hills and I found this spectacular hoodoo and uh, just waited for the light and, and snapped it. It was just a, 
really, I mean, for me, a, a strong image for me, and this did well for me too. This was in the University of Nebraska, or the Great Plains Art Museum at the University of Nebraska, where it uh, won the People's Choice Award at a show, at a group show. It's a thrill to present my photographs here at the Francis Morrison Gallery. Um, always interesting to hear people's reaction. Uh, very rewarding, and an artist works mainly in solitary confinement almost, and so it's great to have some public uh, input. Do you know uh, what uh, this, for example, that uh, picture, uh, what uh, kind of uh, geologic formation, and what is the kind of uh, stone or rock? That's typically bentonite clay. Clay, oh Which yes. is kind of, which is a, really a volcanic ash. Yes. And then this is a different layer with the different kind of rocks in, in amongst the different types. There's different types of uh, um, clay as well, or yes. bentonite clay. Maybe shale or... Yeah, well, there's sort of the redder shale-looking looking stones there. Yeah. Well, the process for cho choosing the slideshow, or actually choosing the show here itself, there's uh, 20 images in the show. It was a tough process, um, but I do have my favorites, and I wanted to get a collection from each region as well. Um, some of the images have done well for me uh, in terms of being, um, let's see, they've been shown in Prairie's, Prairie's North Magazine twice, uh, Western Art Collector Magazine in the U.S. also published on my photographs. Um, they've been exhibited in places like the University of Nebraska, the Lincroft Museum in New Jersey. West part of the province? Southern part. The southern part. The east, west, yeah. Oh. That the shrimp, that's lovely. Dinosaur eggs. To me. Yeah. <laughs> I get equal uh, feedback on both the photography and the paintings. The paintings are quite alluring because of the texture and the tactile quality. People um, have not usually seen something like that before. The painting uh, would be my preferable medium. You're starting with a blank, a blank canvas. It is essentially yours to create. The creative element is, is wide open for me. When I take photographs, landscape photography is essentially me going out there seeing something that I like, composing it, and, and hoping, waiting for great light. I think when I paint, it's, uh, it can be a struggle, it can come quickly, but ultimately it's very fulfilling um, when you see the final product. It's like even when I was writing for the book, I have a degree in English, but I'm, I don't consider myself an author. It was a challenge for sure, but ultimately very rewarding to see the final product and that's the way I feel about my paintings as well and the photographs for that matter too. What's next? Um, well, um, I've been writing this book way for about a good year now. I've got a few projects in mind. Um, abstract series. I'd also like to do a film too. I'd really like to do a film. Yeah. If you have program ideas that you'd like to see on Max TV Local On Demand, write us at max.local at sastel.com. Max TV programming is now available on Max TV On The Go at maxTVOnTheGo.sastel.com.